Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. <coughs> Excuse me. Today, 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 it is a sunny day here in Chicago. It's a sunny fall day, so it's a little brisk outside, but it's nice. Shout out to all of my students. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to look at converting meshes to surfaces. And before we jump into that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and search me up. Find me on YouTube. Click on the red subscribe button. Click on the bell to receive all of the notifications of when my videos are coming out. <clears throat> there is something for everyone. If you're an architecture student or an architect, there is something for you on my page. Hope you'll subscribe and enjoy. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso. I've been posting a lot of student work recently and, and I'm getting a lot of really good feedback on the student work so I'm enjoying that and I think the students are enjoying seeing their work posted so that's a lot of fun go ahead and connect with me and tag me in some of the work that you do I'd love to see it I'd love to share it on my story alright let's jump back over into rhino and grasshopper okay so what you see on the right here is you see a mesh that was converted to a surface and we're gonna look at two ways to do that okay now why would you want to do that so we do a lot of form finding um, and for form finding computational form finding you have to work with meshes we do a lot of um, patterning of surfaces and to pattern surfaces a lot of times that requires converting them to meshes we do a lot of weaver bird that converts to meshes and then now if I want to say use paneling tools well let's paneling tools only works with surfaces so I have to convert my mesh back to a surface so we'll look at two ways to do it uh, the reason we're, look, we're looking at two ways is one way might work better than another one way might not work at all so best to have at least two ways to do it. I know of two ways. If anyone out there knows of more ways, please let me know in the comments below. Alright, so let's take a look at what we have here. I'm going to copy and paste this here. So we'll look at the first way to do this. So you see I have a mesh. That's my mesh and if I deselect it underneath it is my surface. Okay, so we're going to start with the we're going to start with the mesh. Let me let me disable some of the stuff down below. Okay. All right, we'll start with with the mesh. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to deconstruct the mesh. So I'll bring out a deconstruct mesh and we'll plug that in. So that you're going to see is you're going to see a bunch of points. Um, it has vertices, faces, colors, and normals. So I need to add a scribble here. So this is the first way. First way to do this. First way to convert a mesh to a surface. All right. Now I need a surface from points capsule. Surface from points. Okay, so that's gonna. So you see, we have these vertices here. So Grasshopper and Rhino is gonna try to make a surface based on those points. So I'm gonna plug the vertices into points. Okay, so it needs it needs a U count. So here's where this is tricky. It needs a U count, and that's uh, basically if I click on this bubble, input parameter U count failed to collect data. So we need a U count. So I'm going to double click and type in 25. That's going to give me a number slider from 0 to 100. Okay, so I'm it's it's red at the moment. I'm going to highlight that. It's red and as I move my cursor, like for instance there right there, it's not red anymore, but it's nowhere near. It's very cool, I have to say, but it's not it's not my original mesh converted to a surface. So it's about 
sliding this number slider until it turns not red and it is what you want so in this case it's 22 look at that that's a beautiful surface right there and now if I'm using something like paneling tools I could go ahead and create a grid let's create a grid based on the surface domain number just to make sure that this works okay now I'm back in business now I'm working with paneling tools I have a surface made alright so that's the first way fantastic alright let's copy and paste this and let's look at the second way to do this okay so I'm working with my same mesh and I'm also with the second way I'm gonna need a deconstruct mesh okay we gotta have our deconstruct mesh now I'm gonna need a deconstruct face where I deconstruct each one of the mesh faces so if I go back to my mesh each one of these has a face so these are the mesh faces that I'm highlighting with my cursor and I'm gonna go ahead and deconstruct each one of those faces so deconstruct face go ahead and plug in our faces okay we don't see anything on the screen in Rhino but what it's doing now is it's giving us a corner for each face so each face has four corners A B C D so I want to be able to select each one of those corners so I'm going to do that through a list item okay so my list of faces comes from my deconstruct mesh that's my list of faces my indices that I'm calling out for all the A corners they reside here you see when I hover over that 231 a corners so the in indices are 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and so on so those are my indices so I'm gonna plug that in there okay and I'm gonna do that exact same thing for each one of these corners okay so I'm just copying and pasting so B is my indice my list when because I copy and paste it it's coming from the deconstruct mesh so I'm gonna copy and paste that my indices are coming from C and then copy and paste that and then my indices will come from D okay now we can take that and we can construct a four point surface because we have the four corner points is what we have there and we can we can construct a four point surface from those corners and we're gonna have a whole bunch of surfaces then okay so corner A is these are all the corner A's these are all the corner B's these are all the corner C's and these are all the corner D's alright so I'm getting a, an error that I was hoping was gonna go away so let's take a look at what we have data conversion failed from mesh face to point alright so what did I do wrong? Four point surface is there. I have no idea at the moment what I did wrong, but I'm going to figure it out, right? Alright, let's see what we have. These are all plugged in the same exact way. Ah, they're plugged into the vertices that's the issue okay that's why it says that's why it says data failed from mesh face to point mesh face right here to point so these all have to be the points these all have to be the vertices it's good to sometimes it's good to make a mistake and then you guys see that at home and you won't make that same mistake or if you make it you'll know what it is okay look at that so that's the surface now this one's a little different because it has 231 untrimmed surfaces and up above like you know if one is better than the other I would say the one above is better because it's one untrimmed surface I was working with one untrimmed surface this is working with 
a whole bunch. Can I? And these are surfaces, so they're not B-reps, so I don't even know if I can do a B-rep. Just do some things on the fly here. I don't even know if I can do a B-rep join. Let's see. There we go. That's better. That's a lot better to join that into into one open B rep. So let's see, because here we had grid, we had a nice grid like that with our paneling tools. Let's see what we get with this one. Okay, surface domain number. Let's see what happens with that. Okay, this is a problem. This is a problem because this is a B rep, and I need a surface for paneling tools. So that's a that's a whole other issue. So let's get rid of that and let's plug this in and see what we have. We're going to have a lot of points because we're going to have 10 and 10 for each each one of these. So what happens if that number is 1? Does that help me? Okay, it does help me. It's a lot fewer points. I don't know if one... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. My students will see. <laughs> They'll let us know uh, what kind of issues that they that they run into. All right. I think I think that's all we needed to cover there. So let me just make a little custom preview. I like to end end with a custom preview there. Yeah, there we go. Some shadow. All right, if you found this video helpful, click on a like below. Leave me a comment, why did you like it? Click on my big head to subscribe to the channel. Click on the videos in the upper right and the lower left. Those will help you learn some more grasshopper techniques. Okay, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.